Swiss news. All right, let's do this. I'm gonna be a little bit rusty, it's been a while. And this is a huge episode. WWDC just happened, so much to cover. Of course, I can't cover it all, but I'm gonna do my best to cover the highlights. Let's throw up the rundown and we'll get into it. We'll kick things off with the Paul Hudson section of the show because he gives a great overview every year of, you know, what's new in Swift, what's new in Swift UI, what's new in Xcode, all that stuff. So I'm going to point you in that general direction, show you some quick highlights of the articles, right? What's new in Swift 5.7? Now Swift is getting mature enough that a lot of the language features are getting more niche, right? Like I think one of the only things that is going to affect the vast majority of the code is uh, probably my favorite thing, right? The, the new shorthand for unwrapping optionals, right? No more if let name equals name, yada, 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 right? You can just do if let name or guard let name. Small, you know, quality of life thing, but I love that. And again, you can check out the article, uh, you know, the features of Swift 5.7, again, get a little more niche, a little more narrow. I guess regular expressions, if you deal with those, this is another big thing. Complete revamp of regular expressions. You can use them with like a builder pattern uh, down here, right? Capture one or more word. I'm not a super regex expert, uh, so I'll kind of leave that at that. But yeah, definitely check out Paul's article on what's new in Swift 5.7. And again, my favorite thing is this new shorthand for unwrapping optionals. Anything that makes my code cleaner, easier to read, I'm all for. Uh, and then he also has the what's new in Swift UI for iOS 16. He's got an hour long video to accompany this. Recommend watching that, but as always with Paul, you get the video and you get the article if uh, you know all you wanna do is kinda of just see the quick code snippet. Cause sometimes I do. Sometimes I wanna see an explanation and see the video. Sometimes I can just look at a, a code snippet and get it. So I like that Paul uh, gives us the, the variety here. Now I think he's gonna add more cause I know there's more stuff in Swift UI that's right here. Obviously WWDC is a very busy time, so I think he's gonna add more, uh, but this is just some, some basic stuff that's what's new in Swift UI. And again, I know I'm going through this kind of quick. Again, big show, I just wanna point you in the right direction here. What's new in Xcode? Again, another 24 minute video to accompany this. One of my favorite oh yes moment was now you can just add one image for your app icon and it populates all the other different sizes you need, right? Gone are the days where you had to create, you know, 50 different app icons. And don't get me wrong, there was programs that like did it for you, but still, now it's much nicer to just drop in one big image and it like takes care of uh, everything else for you. Again, pointing out some highlights, uh, some source editor improvements. Uh, now you're gonna get, uh, Xcode's gonna autocomplete memberwise initializers, right? If you've been coding for a while, you've probably typed this self.id equals id, self.name equals name, like probably typed that a thousand times. That's gonna be filled in for you now. Same thing with codable, right? If you've ever had to, write your own custom codable stuff, all this boilerplate code is now gonna be like auto-completed for you. So again, if you want more what's new in Xcode 14, usually I do a what's new in Xcode video every year. Uh, I went on vacation like right after WWDC, so I'm so far behind on WWDC, and I'm just now starting to create content again, so I'll still probably make a video eventually, but you know, if you don't wanna wait for that, you know, Paul's got you covered. Next up is my favorite announcement from DubDub, and that is Swift Charts. If you've been following what I've been doing the past you know, few months, I've been working on Creator View. Creator View has a lot of charts in it. As you can see, I'll throw up some screenshots. Uh, those are all custom made charts. Well now, Apple came up with a framework called Swift Charts that allows you to create and customize charts relatively easily. Well, a lot more easier than, than custom building them. And here, Jordy Bruin created a uh, repo for the community to submit all their charts. Because as you can imagine, it's almost an endless different variations of charts that you can create. So here you know, is kind of Apple's examples of Swift charts, all the various charts that they're using. And then I think here's the slide they used in the WWC talk, again, just to show examples of charts. And then what this repo is, a community members will you know, submit a PR to have their charts in here. And here's some examples of some of the charts you can get in here. So if you just wanna go look at the code, see how these kind of charts are made, copy and paste, put them in your project, whatever. Because I plan on revamping all of CreatorView's charts and adding a whole lot more, I'm gonna be very familiar with this, this framework. And I do plan on putting out a course, uh, you know, explaining all this chart stuff and explaining how to create all this stuff. So stay tuned for that. But hey, if all you wanna do is copy and paste, put in your project, here you go, check out this repo. Another change to SwiftUI that I think will affect most people building in SwiftUI is the new SwiftUI navigation API. Essentially navigation view, which again, if you've been writing SwiftUI, you probably have tons of that all over your code, is getting soft deprecated 
more on that in another story. Uh, but essentially, there's a new way to do navigation. Uh, now you're gonna use a navigation stack. Oh, by the way, quick shout out to uh, Natalia here. She used to be on the Swift UI team at Apple. Now she's out putting out content and blog posts for the community. Love to see it, give her blog a, a follow here. Um, so I don't know if she actually worked on this stuff or what she did on Swift UI, but again, you know, you spent some time on the Apple Swift UI team. Uh, it's nice to see that now you're putting out content here. But yeah, so you're gonna be able to, you know, programmatically navigate, which was always kind of tricky uh, prior to this using the navigation destination. Again, I haven't uh, taken a dive into this yet, so I'm not super knowledgeable on this new navigation API. So I need to, read through this and, and revamp my code myself, but I wanted to point you in this direction because I do feel like this is going to affect the vast majority of Swift UI code bases. And I also believe in learning from multiple sources, right? Because different people explain things different ways. So Majid here has a, a article on the same topic, right? Mastering the navigation stack. Again, you're just gonna get his explanation, his examples. Seeing it from multiple perspectives, I always think is the best way to learn stuff. And we're gonna keep with that theme on the next story here, which is the new uh, keywords uh, from any and some with you know, generics protocols. So again, I don't know much about this. I haven't had a chance to, to research this. I do know even while I was on vacation during WWDC, there was a ton of conversation on like developers on like trying to clarify I mean, what's any, what's some. It seemed a little confusing, uh, at least at first. So that's why, again, I wanted to point you to Donnie Walls' article explaining the difference between any and some when you're using you know, protocols and generics. And like I just said, getting multiple different sources. Uh, here's John Sindel's article on the same topic. Again, you're gonna get John's uh, way of explaining things, John's examples, the compare and contrast with Donnie's. Next up, we got Jordan Morgan giving UI kit some love, right? Swift UI was definitely the, the bell of the ball at WWDC, as you can see from this, this slide that was on the State of the Union, which I'm sure triggered so many people. I got I got a chuckle out of that. It says the best way to build an app is with Swift and Swift UI. Yeah, if you can if you can you know support minimum of iOS 16, it's probably true. But uh, anyway, I you know I believe Swift UI is the future. That's obviously Apple's pushing it hard, but UI kit's not going anywhere. So many code bases are in UI kit, and here's Jordan Morgan with some notable UI kit additions, right? We got the UI calendar view, which looks just like the, you know, the new date picker, or iOS 14, this was the new date picker. But now it looks like you can use it, not just in a date picker, but like in a view. And then, you know, you can do some customization here like you did with the rocket ship emojis. Uh, variable symbols, I would argue this is more of an SF symbols feature than a UI kit feature, because like Swift UI got it as well, but still a cool SF symbol feature, I won't split too many hairs here, Jordan. Uh, but the last thing I wanna point out are two things, right? Resizing cells, right? So now your UI table view cells, your UI collection view cells uh, will automatically resize themselves when their content changes. So it's definitely a welcome change. And then what I think is gonna be a nice gateway drug, if you will, for Swift UI into UI kit code bases is now your, your table view cells, your collection view cells can be Swift UI. I'll go down to some code here. All right, so you're gonna have this uh, cell.content configuration and then use a UI hosting configuration. And then now within this closure here, you can have a Swift UI view, right? You can see the typical H stack and stuff. So like I said, I do think this is going to be a good gateway for UI kit code bases to start, you know, implementing uh, Swift UI. So like I said, uh, I know many of you are still out there in UI kit land for whatever reason, but uh, here we go. Here's some new iOS 16 stuff for you. All right, back to Swift UI where we belong. Uh, anyway, here's Jake Sawyer, developer relations at Apple. Just talking about the, I'm gonna click on this picture because when I blow up Twitter, the resolution gets all bad. Anyway, what this is, this food truck app, is Apple sample app. As you can see, multi-platform. You got a Mac app, you got an iPad app, you got an iPhone app. But this is their Swift UI sample app showing a lot of the new stuff in iOS 16. So if you wanna download an app that Apple built and poke around in the code base and see, uh, here's a link to the GitHub repo, but I have it up here as well. And you can see here, uh, it says the sample implements the new navigation split view, the new layout protocol for custom layouts, Swift UI chart or Swift charts. I'm gonna always call it Swift UI charts. I'm gonna mess that up a thousand times <laughs> moving forward, but it's called Swift charts. Uh, and then, you know, the new weather service, right? Cause we got weather kit. So like I said, this sample app uh, just showcases a lot of the new iOS 16 stuff. Uh, so I highly recommend going in there, poking around. Plus if you're curious how, you know, people at Apple structure their code, that's also very educational as well. Moving on, my favorite book, The Human Interface Guidelines, got a complete uh, redesign. I haven't had a chance to fully go through it, so I'm not sure how much the content has changed, but the look and feel of it and the layout of it has definitely changed, right? So 
you see your, on the left here, you have your list of stuff. So we'll do components, I don't know, navigation, navigation bars. Like I said, I don't know if the content itself has changed, but uh, here's navigation bars showing you like per platform, best practices, uh, you know, you want a concise screen title. I always try to go for the images, right? They, yeah, so like for iOS, you know, they show you what a proper navigation bar, how it should be used, how it should look. Same thing on like watchOS. Anyway, human interface guidelines, if you're not familiar, basically shows you best practices on how to build an iOS app, best practices. And they update it all the time, not just a, a stylistic update, but the content updates, right? As new things come out on, on the platform, not just iOS, but Mac OS, iPad OS, watch OS, as you saw. So I think it's a good idea every year, especially around WWDC time when like the new stuff comes out to just give this a read through. And you know, it'll probably take you a couple hours to like read through it. So maybe not just sit down and do it all at once, but Maybe always have a tab open and, you know, as you're eating lunch one day, read a couple, a couple sections, right? And you'll slowly get through it. But it'll make you a much better developer if you're very familiar with the human interface guidelines. Next, we have an awesome resource um, from Javier, the SwiftUI Lab, the lessons from the SwiftUI Digital Lounges. So basically the Digital Lounge, giant Q&A with Apple developers, right? And what Javier did was kind of archived all of that stuff. And you can click on a question, right? Or any of these years changes backwards compatible and you can get the answer. Not this year, last year, not, you know. You can basically skim through this, and I'm gonna go through this real quick. Uh, or I just clicked on that by accident, but I do think this one's funny. It says, are donut and pie charts supported in Swift charts? And they're not. And I think it's funny because I just recently went down this rabbit hole because I have a pie chart in Creator View, as you see here. And I think someone said that like pie charts are like the worst chart ever. And I was like, what? You know, pie charts are very common. So I went down the data visualization, like presentation rabbit hole. And it turns out that like pie charts are horrible and you should use a bar chart. So I just thought it was funny that Apple did not include uh, pie charts and you can kind of see their reason here, right? It says the data visualization academic community is mixed feelings on pie charts. I didn't see mixed feelings. I saw hate. <laughs> anyway, point is I'll scroll real fast. Tons and tons and tons of questions that you can kind of peruse through and get some answers to stuff, right? Like navigation, right? Is navigation view deprecated? I mentioned this a couple stories ago, right? It's soft deprecated. We recommend against using it in new code, right? We talked about the navigation stack is the new thing. Like I said, in your Swift UI app, you probably have navigation views everywhere. So we recommend against it in new code, but it would not be a compile time warning. So I don't think you're gonna see that little yellow warning that it's deprecated at least right now, maybe in like Xcode 16, you'll see it as they slowly phase it out, we'll see. But anyway, great Q&A resource, highly recommend perusing this. On to some quick developer news, uh, account deletion requirements start June 30th, which is today. This is coming out July 1st, but I'm recording it <laughs> June 30th. Basically what this means is apps that support account creation must let users initiate a deletion of their account. And I think Instagram just rolled this out today as well. I saw a bunch of stuff in my, my Twitter feed about it, right? So if you can create an account, you have to give the users the ability to delete an account. And if this is your first time hearing this, well, hopefully good, hopefully you, you can make the, the changes, but this has been a long time coming. They have been talking about this for, I don't know the exact amount of time, but <laughs> this, they told us a while ago this was coming. I, I think they even like delayed it one time. Anyway, another good piece of developer news is apps that use iCloud can now be transferred to another developer in the Apple developer program. If you're not familiar with what this was, if you used iCloud or CloudKit, that app could not be transferred to another developer. For example, you couldn't sell that app. Uh, a personal example, Creator View, my app, does use uh, iCloud. So I had to create a separate developer account. So Creator View has its own developer, Apple developer account, and I have my personal one because if that app ever got acquired one day or I wanted to sell it, it needed to be a nice separate package in the past. Now that's all gone. You can now transfer apps to another developer. People have been begging for this for years. So nice to see it finally happen. On to the Twitter wisdom portion of the show. Nick Lockwood here has a great message, but I wanna, I don't want people to take this to the extreme, right? It says, I used to write terrible code. Uh, over the years, my code has become a lot more polished, but when I see all the amazing cool apps and games people ship with god awful code behind them, I sometimes think I focused on the wrong priorities. No app ever won an award for best code base. And this is a, in response to Cassidy's tweet, right? Saying that there are no prizes for writing the best code ever, unless you're creating something for developers that will read your code. Now I don't, people are gonna take this to the extreme because that's how the internet is, right? The message here is not it doesn't matter what your code looks like, you write horrible, shitty code, it doesn't matter. That's not what they're saying. They're saying like that as developers, it's very easy for us to worry so much if our architecture is perfect and, and our code is perfectly reusable, right? We, we spend so much time on that versus like, 
why don't you make a product that people actually want and makes revenue, right? That's, that's really the goal at the end of the day, right? Like, like Nick says, no app ever won an award for the best code base. But again, don't take it to the extreme. We're not saying that code doesn't matter. And you're gonna see a ton of like, if you wanna read through the thread, there's a ton of response going back and forth that people, you know, that's kind of what they said. So yeah, the message is, is, you know, think about your priorities if you're building a product that you're trying to sell and make a living off of. Um, that's probably more important than the perfect architecture. Next in the Twitter wisdom section, we have Anker here saying, how to increase your luck as a software developer. And I wholeheartedly believe in this. And let me talk about it, right? Start a blog or podcast, YouTube channel, Instagram account, TikTok account, whatever. Create content is, is the point there. Create projects, uh, build in public, develop soft skills, share more and compare less, help people, network, 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 network. To sum this all up, right, is like when you are, you know, have a blog, a YouTube channel, a podcast, and you're putting your work out there, you're, you're building in public, you're engaging with your work in the community, you're, you're sharing what you're working on, you're developing the soft skills, you know, building relationships, networking with people on Twitter and the iOS developer community. Like all this comes into play and like, you'd be amazed at the opportunities, right? Or how he says, your luck, right? As having a, a YouTube channel and a following and a, and a Twitter account, like, and, and building in public with, with Creator View or even just my tutorials, the amount of opportunities that come my way just from doing that, like, is insane, right? So you can call it luck, but at the same time, if you do all these things for a sustained period of time, right? You can't just do all this for a week and expect to see the results. If you do all this for the, a sustained period of time, build a reputation, it's going to seem like luck, but you're going to get so many opportunities. Moving on, we have a fun article from Corey Bohan here, Xcode through the years. And it's exactly what you think it is, right? It's a kind of a origin story of our beloved program, Xcode, right? How it started off as like project build. I can't remember the exact name of it. Uh, yeah, project builder, you know, from Next back in 1992 with this brand new programming language called Objective-C. That's fun. Uh, but anyway, I, I won't belabor this too much, but it's fun to scroll through, see all the old screenshots, the old pictures, kind of the history of how Xcode, you know, like Interface Builder used to be a completely separate app, you know, then they got merged. Uh, and I'm kind of curious, like my first Xcode when I started was Xcode 6. I remember it vividly, right? I remember that feeling of like being like, I'm gonna be a programmer, I'm downloading Xcode. And I don't know, it was a cool feeling. And I remember it, Xcode 6 was my first Xcode. So I'm curious what your first Xcode or even Project Builder if you go way back. But yeah, again, this is just walks through screenshots, kind of the history, the evolution, of Xcode, it's just a fun read. I recommend uh, going through it if you've been if you've been in this world for a while, or maybe if you're new to this world and you just kind of want to see the history. It, it was a, a fun read. Next up, this is just a cool animation. I don't really have anything to say about it except this is it's kind of like the iPad mouse cursor, how it it's using uh, SwiftUI's timeline view and canvas to morph between shapes. I haven't played with Timeline View or Canvas. Those are both relatively new. I think they were new in iOS 15. Um, so I haven't had a chance to play with those too much, but I just think it's cool animation. That's, that's really all I have to say about that. Moving on to AR Corner, we have Apple's, uh, I believe it's called, someone posted it down here. I get this confused. Room Plan, the augmented reality, brand new in iOS 16, Room Plan. But look what this thing does, it's crazy. Yeah, so you're, you see those white outlines? It's building a 3D model of your room, like as you're scanning it in real time, you kind of see the 3D model down there. I thought this was crazy. I haven't played with this myself to see how like accurate and, and good it is, but I mean, the demo looks pretty cool. So I'm curious if anybody's played with this, I'm curious what your experience is, but this, this blew my mind. And then finally, we'll wrap this up with the LOLs. Make me do two hours of live coding interviews for a job and then still reject me? Yeah, I'm starting Monday. <laughs> See how am I? <laughs> Just, that made me laugh. And then finally, we can all relate to this, right? The small delights. Here you got your spaghetti code base that we've all seen and been a part of and built ourselves, right? We've all done it. You make your own little corner nice and pretty, but that's all it is. Just your own little corner. But you love that little corner. It's progress. I, I, I really related to this one. That wraps it up for Swift News. What the hell? We're back, I guess. We're going to try this monthly. I'm back to creating content. Uh, so we'll see you in August for the next episode.